developer for our safe haven a hate motivated incident and extremism response project for dublin city interfaith forum here in ireland i'd like to thank the network for religious and traditional peacemakers for the opportunity to speak with you today so what exactly is safe haven what well, safe haven was set up as a practical interfaith outreach project to support victims on an individual and on a community level uh, in relation to incidents of uh, hate and extremism. So how we do that is actually we engage with faith communities, faith leaders, civil society, police, relevant government agencies and other, other uh, actors such as even intergovernmental agencies on occasion. But what's really important is to remember that Safe Haven tries to provide training and upskilling and empowering to uh, faith communities in responding to uh, supporting and referring um, victims of hate motivated incidents um, through to community based victim supports. In essence Safe Haven is trying to do what faith communities do very well, putting compassion into practice. So the reason why Safe Haven was created in the first instance was that we recognised very early on that faith communities and faith leaders are often dealing with individuals in crises. They're usually there to be able to provide support to the individual at their time of need. And when it comes to dealing with incidents of hatred and extremism, these types of um, um, criminal activities or forms of discrimination or further down the, the, the line in, in terms of severity uh, in, in extremist actions. Um, these are messages or signal crimes or signal incidents that can have a significant impact not just on the individual but also on the community uh, that also identify with that person. So Safe Haven tries to reclaim that space um, uh, for faith communities to actually step in and provide practical supports. And that's within um, a more secularized society where the space for uh, faith-based supports is very often squeezed out to the periphery. The periphery. Um, so we do it through interfaith dialogue, uh, we do it through collaboration, and we do it through engagement with other faith communities. And it can play a vital role in providing peace building and developing sort of um, social cohesion uh, and it can be a very very effective strategy to address local grievances in one, in one instance and then also deal with extremism on the other. So that direct engagement with faith communities can sometimes be problematic for um, local government or uh, agencies such as police but not so when it comes to the interfaith space because you're not talking about um, engagement with a particular tradition or a, a particular um, uh, ideology or a particular uh, expression. You're talking about an interfaith space and it's a safe space for individuals whether, regardless of their faith uh, tradition or regardless of um, where they're coming from to come together in a collaborative space for the betterment and for the, for the, the common good. So Safe Haven, as I said earlier, is about recognising, supporting and reporting in relation to hate and, and extremism. So we teach people over six weeks how to uh, recognise what hate speech is, to recognise what hate crime is, to, to understand what the process of radicalisation is and what it isn't. And then also talking about the, the uncomfortable um, aspect of dealing with violent extremism. Uh, in relation to reporting, we, we, we train faith leaders, faith communities to understand their obligations and also how they can go about reporting to statutory and non-statutory mechanisms. Um, so whether it's to report directly to the police, whether in person or online and act as an advocate for somebody to report this, or indeed if they wanted to report to a civil society um, agency or a civil society group. Uh, and, and raise attention to um, a particular type of uh, incident that's ongoing if they don't feel comfortable going to the police. 
but it's about encouraging people to come forward and to talk about these uh, issues so we can actually engage and support with them and then as i say support this is something faith communities do day in day out and again it's through interfaith activities that we can actually provide better referral and signposting towards um, you know community-based or professional support for victims but equally we also have the opportunity of being able to provide pastoral or spiritual support to those who've also been harmed so in a lot of ways we're looking at things through a restorative frame where we're considering uh, finding a way to restore the harm caused by these types of uh, experiences so why are faith communities important actors and allies uh, to address hate speech extremism and inter community tensions was a question I was asked uh, and I'd like to say I suppose very quickly that faith communities have at their very essence a desire to support one another in solidarity to assist community members to overcome adversities in life uh, faith also provides inner strength it uh, gives a sense of responsibility ethics and compassion for other human beings and it also promotes a strong social and cultural network so branching that out into other faith traditions is quite natural um, and there's an opportunity to identify other allies and to find other supports and services to uh, assist in addressing hate uh, extremism and then finding ways of uh, identifying early signs of inter and intra community tensions and I suppose lastly then you know it's about understanding that faith communities themselves can act as um, um, fantastic barometers to gauge potential issues before they actually occur uh, 